Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined, Denver, Colorado, and welcoming back Chris Pistorius. How are you doing, Chris? Hey, good. How are you? Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, it's great to see you again. And Chris is the founder of Kickstart Dental Marketing. And while uh, Chris specializes in dental marketing, other medical professionals, marketers, entrepreneurs, and businesses can learn from his digital marketing experience over 15 years, working with countless local business owners and industries across all, ma all facets of marketing, consulting, coaching. Uh, and you've been able to build up a local digital marketing agency and one of the top advertising agencies in the, com uh, in the country. And what we're going to talk about today is how to kickstart your marketing, right? And uh, I mean, let's face it, uh, you know, Chris, as market conditions change, as buyer behavior changes, all these changes are happening. Um, sometimes people kind of get trapped and don't sort of know how to kickstart their marketing and you know maybe it's being it's becoming less and less what they're doing is becoming less and less effective but they don't know how to kickstart it yeah i call it ostrich marketing because sometimes right. i think you know what happens is that um people aren't quite sure what to do and so they'll put their head in the sand and do nothing it's kind of the easiest way to do it right so yeah. we've, we've seen that and we help kind of our our goals are to help dentists specifically, but really any local businesses come out of that hole and, and just show them a clear path on how they can do things to market their business and not have to break the bank. Yeah. So what are some of those ways that you can, um, you know, kickstart and get your marketing going without breaking the bank? Because, you know, a lot of times people think that their only option is to is to throw money at it. Yeah, well, there, I think there's an appropriate time to throw some money sure. at it. I think what you've got to do first is identify who it is you're going after. I mean, do you really know who your ideal customers or clients or whatever are? Um, and until you know that, then you don't really have a plan of you can't really market that well because you don't know where to market because you don't know who your who your ideal customers are. So I always tell people to start there. Yeah. And it's and it's funny because, you I mean, you would think, you know, in some businesses, people might think like you say, you know, in a dental business, you might think, oh, well, I'm a dentist. Everybody is my is my potential customer. But if but but that's never true. It, there is there, yeah. there is always, you know, a, there is always a target customer if you can narrow it down, because if you go too broad, then you're just, you know, competing in a very general market. Yeah. And, you know, everybody's a little different. I mean, mm -hmm. whatever business you're in, I mean, dentistry is super competitive. Yeah. There's tons of dentists everywhere. Right. But if you're a, you know, own a lumber yard or if you're an attorney or whatever it may be, you know, there's always something that we call with our we, we talk about with our clients called a unique selling proposition. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, you know, what makes you different? Why should somebody choose you versus your competition? And, you know, that's kind of the number two thing that we do is after we identify who it is we want to bring in, we identify what makes you unique. And if you don't know that, then we'll help you create it. But those are two really key elements back to back that you've really got to have put together um, before you should really start throwing money at things. Yeah, because as you said, I mean, there's, you know, there's a lot of similar, similar businesses out there. And if you, if you provide the you know, the product or service, that's nowadays, that's just the baseline, right? It's, it's everything else you wrap around it to make yourself unique, um, to make, you know, the experience different. I think that's kind of what people are looking for now. They're looking for, uh, as you said, is what makes them different because we, we perceive everything to be pretty commoditized today. Yeah, it's without question. And, you know, I, I really suggest when people think about this, they really try to get unique about it. You know, don't just say, well, we have the best customer service mm -hmm. or we have the best widget or, you know, whatever it may be, you know, really start thinking about what makes you different. You know, what do you have special equipment? Do you have special skills, special education, something that really clearly separates you from that competition and does truly make unique, make you unique. And we've even had some clients create things just to make them unique. Like right. for instance, in dentistry, it could be, you know, evening hours, weekend mm. hours. Some, we even had a client that'll actually go to your home if you can't get out or whatever. Those are the type of things that really work well. Mm. Wow. D dentist coming to your home. Yeah, <laughs> you got to be hiding behind the couch. <laughs> yeah, they, hire, they, they build these, you know, vans and deck them out and they've got kind of like a mobile lab and uh, they can roll them right to people's homes. 
Wow. So, so what you've just outlined there is, uh, as you said, is like before you start investing your hard earned dollars in marketing is figure out where you're going to come, you know, number one, your target customer. And then, as you said, what is going to make you unique? What's going to make you stand out? And it's worth investing time and energy in that piece, because that's the thing that's going to really kind of carry you forward. And, and it may evolve over time, right? Yeah, without question. Um, you know, business plans and business slap strategies change dramatically. I mean, I remember 14 years ago when I first put my business plan together, I looked at it not long ago and it's basically nothing like what we have now. So right. market conditions change, what you offer can change, um, the widgets you sell might change and your whole strategy could change. So mm -hmm. that could definitely change your marketing strategy. And I think the, the other thing, um, Chris, that often happens to people is that uh, they identify their their target customer initially right and then they kind of stick with that even though their their customer may change i mean they trade their taste they, they buy the behaviors of customers may change but people don't spend enough time like revisiting and updating and making sure am i going after um, is this still my target customer is this still the right traits is this still a, all of that it is something that is is getting becoming more dynamic than ever. The days of being able to identify your target customer and just say, okay, that's good for the next couple of years. Well, that's yeah. No, and I, I think that's why it's important to use, you know, <laughs> we know some clients from past, not not Dennis really, but from other industries that try to use spreadsheets and whatnot to track customer data and what and you know, we always try to refer them to some, a CRM that allows them to manipulate data and look at it in big groups so that you can help identify you know, who are your clients? Who's the most common to, to, you know, purchase your product? Where do they live? Is it a certain area? What do they, you know, what kind of money do they make depending on what you're doing? So we always try to tell our clients that you've got to have something in place that can show you big, large sums of data, if you will, to help you identify who those target clients are. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. It would be great. And obviously, uh, uh, our CRM does does that. Uh, you know, we built in the whole account management piece so you can actually go in and look at look at your, your customers and actually immediately see the gaps and what you've sold to one and not another, you know, products and services. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, I, I, I don't think you can operate a business today without a CRM system, uh, um, you know, whether it's ours or somebody else's, because it's become too complex, the data, the, um, the changing um, behaviors, all of that stuff, you need to be able, you need to be able to track it. And it doesn't, you know, and you start, we always say start simple. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, without question. I mean, you know, I could see somebody starting a business off a spreadsheet, but once you start taking off and, you know, you're getting some real clients and some real momentum, you know, it, and it kind of draws me to another rant is one yeah. thing I wish I would have done differently when I started was really take more time building out your processes and procedures and having a good solid CRM should be one of those because, um, you know, we when we started we started all right we started a business come you know join us we started bringing on clients and we were taking on anybody that would pay us basically at the time and then all of a sudden we're like oh well now we've got to actually fulfill all these orders right <laughs> so yeah. we hadn't created any processes or procedures or really had a crm and it, it kind of kicked our butt for the first month few months so I definitely strongly suggest that. <laughs> yeah. And it, and it's a great point too because I mean if you are going to if you are going to invest in marketing and all of that is um what you just outlined there is, is a perfect example is is you need the processes in place first because you can how are you going to deal with the with the with the incoming that comes in, how are you going to reach out? How, who's going to get these? How is it going to be distributed? How are you going to follow up? All of those things, you can't do those. You can't do those manually anymore. Um, yeah. I mean, maybe you can at the very beginning. You said, but that'll soon uh, kick you. But it's better to invest time in that before you invest your marketing dollars. I think so, without question. I think that if you can, if you can start putting processes and procedures together quickly and early, I mean, they'll always change, and you'll have to tweak them. Yeah you'll still be ahead of the curve. Yeah. And, and the thing about it is, um, Chris, is that it, when, when you ever you mention like, oh, you got to put processes and procedures in place, people go, Ugh, <laughs> and they're going to be all oh, this going to take. And it's, they don't have, make your processes simple and make them work, right? Make them, if they're not making things more efficient, then it's not a good process. If they're not helping your customers, then it's not a good process. 
Yeah, simplicity scales. Everything yeah. else doesn't, right? So mm-hmm. you've got to you've got to talk about scale too. I mean, we run a very boutique type agency here. Mm-hmm. Um, we're not a big company, but we also build systems and processes that can scale for simplicity purposes. If that makes any yeah. sense, I, no, I really suggest that if if anybody wants to learn more about this, if they haven't already, read the book E Myth Revisited. It's a great resource. It talks a lot about building out your business to to scale, even though it may not ever be a huge business. Right. Yeah. I know. Absolutely. I, I would I would agree with that. So, what are some of the um, what are some of the other considerations that uh, people should take into account if they really want to get off on the right foot this year with their marketing or for the you know the balance of this year? Yeah, I, I think probably if I was a small or local business um, right now. We're seeing some of the biggest pushes and best results in things like social media advertising. Mm-hmm. Um, SEO is still a major factor, but you have to, I think, build a marketing strategy that has elements that are quick wins and then other elements that are that take a little bit longer, but will probably pay bigger dividends. Mm-hmm. And that's SEO. SEO will take a little bit more time, especially if you're a new business. You have to yeah. build an NSEO for anybody that doesn't know it is search engine optimization. And it's basically getting your website to rank highly on Google when somebody does a search, like looking mm-hmm. for widgets in this city or whatever it may be. Right. Yeah. And you've got to build a lot of trust with Google and you've got to send them a lot of signals and it just takes time to do that. So I, I think some quicker wins for people that they need to mix in as well would be Facebook ads, Instagram ads, TikTok, if that's appropriate for your mm-hmm. industry, Google ads, certainly. Now, you have to be careful because sometimes you can spend a lot of money on these platforms if you don't know what you're doing and get yeah. very little in return for it. We see it all the time. So the the platforms are not simple. They can be complex, but there are ways that you can do it um, as a business owner as well. Yeah. And and again, it kind of comes back, Chris, to, to the point that you made at the beginning is, uh, you know, the social media um, advertising. Yeah, it's. It's very accessible, um, but you have to know what you're doing. But at the end of the day, you have to be able to target correctly. Otherwise, you are going to spend a lot of money. And it can they can be money pits. I mean, unfortunately, they you know Google Ads can take it down a business on its own if you're not careful. It sure can. And I've seen it happen, unfortunately. Um, it's just, it is. And you've got to know, especially with social media, because social media does still give you yeah. a really good opportunity to target on demographics, you know. Where do they live? Like even down to the zip code level. Um, do they? What kind of income do they make? Do they own their own home? You know, male, female. You know, all of those types of demographics. You can really do a good job of targeting on social media. That's why it's so important to know it. Now, platforms like Google, Yahoo, Bing, things like that, search engines. You can't get so much into detail of demographics, but you mm-hmm. can still write your ads really targeting a specific demographic if that makes sense yeah so still important there as well yeah and i think you know as you said i mean just looking at uh, at where your customers might be for instance i mean if you know you know the next door app right there's people on there all the time saying oh can you recommend a good dentist or can you recommend a good so if you are actually investing in some advertising on that platform you're probably right in front of the right correct audience yeah we do we use next door quite a bit as well Mm -hmm. yeah Without a question. Now, the problem with next door is that it's usually, you know, politically motivated rant that goes on there. <laughs> every once in a while you do get some, you know, <laughs> looking for a dentist or a handyman, really what the platform was built for. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, what I always say is uh, I, I I love next door because it uh it just it comforts me that all these first world problems are getting solved. <laughs> That's for sure, right? <laughs> um, but the but I mean, it it is a good point though. As as we said, is like finding finding where your audience is, like whether they're on Instagram, whether their TikTok is appropriate or whatever. And I think we're getting more and more. Um, I mean, personally, <clears throat> I can't stand the Instagram ads because they're addictive, right? I find I have to stop myself buying nonsense stuff all the time <laughs> because they're so persuasive. Right. Um, so, I mean, these are great. I think as an, as consumers, we're getting very used to now to being marketed through these platforms. Yeah, without question. And here's, here's a tip with social media. Don't sell anything. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, and the reason I say this is because think about your audience. Social media is people going onto Facebook or Instagram, checking out to see what their family's up to, their friends. They're trying to show off and keep up with the Joneses, usually mm-hmm. things like that. They're not necessarily going on there to look for a dentist or a widget or a lawyer or whatever. Right. 
So mm -hmm. when you try to sell, sell, sell on social media with your advertising, it's very off putting for these people and they'll ignore it. And they're, you're right. They're, they're seeing these ads so often and trying to be sold to, it's just like, you know, they zone out. So what works really well for us, especially in the beginning of a marketing campaign is use social media ads to introduce yourself to the community, right? Mm -hmm. Use personalized photos of you, your family, your dog, that works really well, animals, but use personal actual photos of yourself and say, look, you know, um, I'm new to the area or I didn't know. I don't know if you knew this, but I'm doctor he, she or whatever. And I'm at blah, blah, blah. And we specialize in this, that or the other thing. It's nice to meet everyone. That's what social media is all about. And that's what the message messaging should be in advertising. And so then you intrigue people and you start them in this funnel of, all right, you've introduced yourself. Now you've built that relationship a little bit. Now you can start talking about business. It's like dating, right? It's not like on the first date you ask somebody to marry you, right? Yeah. You have to build that relationship a little bit first. So I think that's one of the biggest places that people make mistakes on social media advertising. Yeah, yeah no, I, I would agree with you. I always tell people to treat it like uh, in person, right? I mean, you wouldn't walk into a room of people and just start shouting at them saying, buy this, right? right. I mean, you know, you'd, you'd get in, as you said, you'd introduce yourself to some people, you'd chat, you'd build, you'd build some rapport. Um, just because it's online doesn't mean those rules don't apply. Nobody likes being, you know, just a, a, a carnival barker shouting at them. <laughs> I'm going to steal that one. Carnival barkers. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how do so, um, so one of the things also I think is really important, um, Chris, and you probably is figuring out the, the personality of your business, right? Because I've seen other people get into this trap now where they think, uh, oh, you know, everybody's being kind of quirky and funny and what nowadays I need to inject that into my, into, into what I'm marketing but it doesn't suit your business. That's not who you are. That's not how you're perceived. So I think that's important because I've seen people start to do that and you're going, Ooh, this is very jarring. This is not, uh, and this is not what I want from you. Yeah. I, I, you know, it's all about culture and you can't force culture and you can't, you know, I'd love to have a culture like Google or Instagram or all these really cool startups. Right. <laughs> but it's just not the way we run. So, mm -hmm. you know, you're, I think you're absolutely right. You know, you have to go with kind of the way you're wired and do business that way, because if you're faking it at some point that your customers are going to realize it and they're going to be like, wait a minute, this isn't, this isn't what I signed up for. Right. So yeah, you can't fake that. You just got to go with the way that your culture, you know, is. And, and I think that's the best way to move forward. Yeah, and and the and the authenticity piece because I think people want to. Uh, we've been through so much and all of that, and um, you know, people want authenticity. They want real people. They want to you know trust the people they're they're dealing with. They want some kind of relationship. Um, so these are these are things that you should keep front and center and not kind of get distracted into into trying like you know trying as I said trying quirky things. Yeah, without question, I think it's you know. I, and it's it also, it's like with anything you do, like content on your website or how you write your ads on social media, or even how you post on social media, right? Use that same branding culture, the way you do business, use that as a standard and, and continue to go forward with it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, um, Chris, as usual, this has been um, great insights. Thank you so much for joining us today. All of Chris's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people uh, a little more about you and what you do. Yeah, so I've uh, owned Kickstart Dental Marketing for the past 14 years. Uh, we help dental marketing practices, you know, really or dental practices, I should say, bring in new patients, grow their practices and really target the the type of patients that they want. So, mm -hmm. yeah, no, it's fantastic. I've still got that image of the mobile dental thing, you know, yeah, the man yeah, arriving, at, arriving at the house and the poor kids like running out the back door, climbing over the fences to get away. <laughs> <laughs> Probably so, right? <laughs> I would be. <laughs> Yeah. Well, listen, uh, thanks again, Chris. Thank you for watching and listening, and I'll see you all again soon.